From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to talk a little bit about data and analytics. Joining us is Aaron Clymer, who is the founder and CEO of Data Climber, which is a next-gen data and analytics consulting firm that empowers client success by unlocking the value of data through the implementation of modern cloud data solutions that drive positive results, accessibility, and actionable insights. Yesterday, Aaron and I talked about how you can become a data hero, and today we're going to continue the conversation talking about how you can constantly optimize your campaign performance. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with Aaron Clymer, the founder and CEO of Data Climber. Aaron, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Thanks. Great to be here. Great to have you back on the show. Excited to continue our conversation where yesterday we talked about the foundation of understanding your data, basically getting everything into a central location, a data warehouse. And then there's all sorts of applications and plugins that you can layer on top of your data warehouse. So the average marketer doesn't have to do something like learn SQL to get access to manipulating their data. And it brings me to the second topic today of how do we do a better job accessing the data, not just for our understanding of what's happening in our business, but also understanding when there are triggers we need to take advantage of. Talk to me a little bit about campaign optimization. What are some of the ways that you can figure out who to target, when to target them, and how to target them? The beauty of having data in a central repository like a data warehouse is you can use it for anything, any purpose, even outside of marketing, there's plenty of use cases. So you're both helping the rest of your organization and they're helping you because they're getting data into your marketing database that you otherwise may not ever get access to or have an easy way of getting it. So again, what I love about data warehouses is you never get stuck. Anything you can think of that you want to do is going to be feasible as long as you have the data. So when it comes to campaigns and targeting and all that, Again, the sky's kind of the limit. You have the data, you can go then figure out which pieces of that data you want to use, how are you going to leverage it? And you can automate a lot of stuff that is kind of low-hanging fruit. So I'll give you an example we did for one of our larger clients, running a lot of automated campaigns on a daily basis, big B2C company. And in a few days, we built a little script, essentially a little data tool that would automatically look at the results of all campaigns running yesterday. They would pick the top five, and sort of double down the investment on those and the bottom five and just stop those campaigns altogether. So just simple automation, not even machine learning, you know, really kind of a heuristic approach to that. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were saved over the course of a quarter just because of a little tweak like that. So, you know, if you have volume there, those kind of things can help. Otherwise, the really story here is that the power of data that you've never been able to use before. So if you can bring in dimensions about your customers you just didn't have access to before, you can now use those in your marketing campaign efforts and target much more specifically and get much more granular. One of the things that just popped into my head is it's not necessarily just about optimizing the existing campaigns. Having a true grasp on your data allows you to infinitely segment your audience and you can look based on behaviors. So talk to me about some of the ways that smart marketers are using their data and some of the tools that we've talked about to figure out who to target. How are they building audiences off of their data warehouse? In my mind, it comes first to the peer analysis. So understanding your business, you know your business to a certain extent, you know your client, and your customers, you have a sense of what kind of questions you might want to ask about behavior that you would guess, you know, start with a good guess of what you think is driving a certain action that you're looking for, a conversion, a purchase, retention, even whatever it is. And there are tools out there we talked about last time, like Sigma Technologies, that will allow you to ad hoc, just access that data, explore it any way you want. 
and get some insights that you never would have gotten before. So of course, the insights is the key there, getting a lot of great results on what you could do, putting together a story, and then that's going to help you take action on that data down the road. It's just the sky's the limit. I think the big part of the story there is really bringing in some very interesting data that you have on your prospects or customers. To me, the understanding of how to build infinite number of audiences is not only to understand who you're trying to prospect, right? What are the signals or behaviors that your prospects are exhibiting, but it's also when to reach out to them. When you start to think about some common trends and triggers that marketers are looking at, sure, somebody came into my data warehouse, there is a prospect that visited the homepage, that filled out a form, they said they're interested in products or services, they've clicked on three emails, all sorts of different data. What are some of the ways that marketers are trying to figure out whether somebody is actually in market and ready to buy? The temporal stuff is really interesting. If you need to get down to real-time interaction with your client, lots of different technologies are going to layer on top of your data warehouse. And you can do that. That's what I love about these cloud data stacks, where you can insert, and there's thousands of vendors out there selling specific point solutions, but they're cloud first and they integrate directly with your data warehouse. And so you can, again, just kind of do anything. So if you're looking for that optimal time to interact with your customer, that would be, again, figured out through your analysis of what is that action that you're looking for? What is that event? And then setting up these tools to monitor for that specifically, and then you have your channel to reach out to your customer. So Aaron, when we think about campaign optimization, right, often it is, how do I find a new audience? How do I make my data more targeted? How to make sure I have the right triggers to start a campaign based on somebody who is in market? And then there is the actual math and science of being able to optimize a campaign, an ad campaign or something that you're doing in real time. Talk to me about some of the science and technology that's being used to actually do existing ongoing campaign automation. I mentioned a tool yesterday of Flywheel Technologies that will actually automate a lot of A-B testing of campaigns for you. So even when you have the audience selected, you might have three versions, of course, and you want to do that quickly and easily. Again, not being technical, not having to understand machine learning or anything like that, but being able to quickly A-B test a variety of your campaigns and get results fairly quickly and automate landing on the most optimal solution there, I guess I'd say. So there's just so many great features out there, that, again, for the marketer that allows you to be very smart and yet not have to understand the technology behind it. It turns out it's not only the data warehouse that's useful for campaign optimization. We're getting this overlay of being able to access the data from a data warehouse, being able to create new audiences, figure out what the triggers are to start campaigns. But then there's the more data-driven machine learning aspect of this where we have third-party tools doing campaign optimization for us. So now we have this unlimited access to data. You can launch a campaign, and you don't actually have to be the one who necessarily optimizes it. There's all sorts of solutions that are helping you figure out what campaign is actually working, which ones you should kill. Aaron, I guess the last question I have for you, are there any other tools or services that for someone who's trying to be smarter about marketing, get more access to their data, or do a better job with campaign optimization, any other tools you recommend that marketers look up? The thought that comes to mind after this conversation is that the natural progression of this whole approach is personalization, right? So getting down to the point where you actually are sending a personalized message or interacting with your customer in a personal way. And you can do that too, because again, you have this raw granular data of everyone because you have a data warehouse that can handle as much data as you need. So you have this amazing granularity to your data and you can personalize the message. And then there's plenty of tools to do that. I don't know if I have one specifically I would point out, but personalization is absolutely at your fingertips there. The more you understand your customer, the more you can learn about them, the better you are at delivering the right marketing campaign to them. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks to Aaron Clymer, founder and CEO of Data Climber, for joining us. If you'd like to get in touch with Aaron, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Data Climber, D-A-T-A-C-L-Y-M-E-R. Or you can visit his company's website, which is dataclimber.com. Again, that's D-A-T-A-C-L-Y-M-E-R.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D 
on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy.